Thank you, Mary Sue, for those thoughts and those words. Our next speaker, Jerry Kilgore, is a partner in McGuire Woods Law Firm in Richmond, but doesn't practice much in Richmond. He has a multi-state practice that focuses on state attorneys general and governors. State attorneys general quickly are becoming a force impacting businesses at every state capital. He provides experience in the scope of the office, the duties, the authority, and the decision-making process within those offices. His government experience includes serving as Virginia Attorney General from 2002 to 2005, and as Virginia Secretary of Public Safety from 1994 to 1998, when he served in Governor George Allen's cabinet, overseeing 11 state agencies. Jerry and his twin brother Terry have been fixtures in Southwest Virginia and Republican Party politics for decades. We think of Southwest Virginia as the fighting ninth, but Southwest Virginia also is that region of the state where both parties know that to get anything done for their region, which is one of the poorest in the state, they have to work together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jerry Kilgore. Well, thank you, Bob. It's great to be back. It's great to see so many friends in this room, and I appreciate all you've done for me in my career, all that you do for Terry and his career. And it's great to be on stage with uh, Governor Hager, General Terry, Senator Kane. It's great to see you again. Now, it's so great for so many of us to come out to support Sorensen, to put our political differences aside, to come together for a good cause and Folks, I'm just talking about the State Democratic Caucus. <laughs> and what better amount of respect than to look around the room and see moderate Republicans in the same room as Tea Party Republicans. Now that's support of Sorensen. You know, all kidding aside, Sorensen Institute has provided great training for some of our great leaders in the Commonwealth today. They talk about how we do politics in Virginia. In Virginia, politics is a vocation, but Virginia is complicated. How else can you explain the dramatic changes in election results that occur year after year? We're coal on one end of the state and we're water on the other end of the state. We're farming in the south and the valley and high tech and federal services in the north. The complexity of our state has forged strange alliances and produces even stranger election results. Every national political figure of any importance, and most certainly every political operative, has come through Virginia to work or run campaigns. They can learn a lot from Virginia politics. You know, there, there are strong partisans in this room tonight, strong partisans that represent their parties well. For the most part, we're all Virginians first, like the group that has been joining me tonight on stage. Each represents a lifetime of commitment to serving Virginians. Mary Sue, John, and I all wanted to be governor. Tim probably still wants to be governor. <laughs> But the contributions of this group has been many and speaks volumes about how we do politics right in Virginia. Mary Sue, we're so proud that you were the first elected female attorney general. I suspect that farm... <laughs> I suspect that your farm life growing up in Patrick County pre prepared you well for service as attorney general, especially considering all the things you had to shovel out of that office on a daily basis. You know, John, as Lieutenant Governor, you, you spearheaded the change in that office from being Lieutenant, from being an unknown office to one that traveled around the state countless times. I would never went anywhere in Virginia that John Hager had not been there first. So thank you for your service to the Commonwealth. And Tim, you and I had a hard fought campaign but Virginia has been fortunate to have you in its service, from serving in the city here to serving as our senator in Washington. Thank you for your service. 
Each of us knows that in Virginia, political races are fierce, and especially now. You know, the divides are great. Since Virginia is a purple state now, we're being told on, by the national media every day, our divisions are now block by block, not city by city or county by county. Today's 24-hour news cycle demands aggressive reporters and drama. Each side now openly has its own news source. While most of us in the room watch Fox News, I'm sure there are a few people that still watch MSNBC. But these organizations strive on stories that pit one side against the other. But enough of blaming the news outlets for the stories. Enough of blaming news outlets for the divisiveness. At some point, the political leaders themselves own the comments and they own the causes. As a targeted state in national elections, Virginians have seen firsthand the power of nasty media campaigns. Who for, can forget the wonderful television ads from last year's campaign? The national targeting has brought Virginia this hard form of politics that I thought we only knew in the fighting ninth district. But now it's all over Virginia. And I do, I don't foresee the return of civility, at least in campaigns, in the near future. You know, we in Virginia are proud that we have leaders that make bold statements. In a church just a few blocks away, one Virginian called for freedom and helped launch a revolution. And just a few short blocks from where we gather, another Virginian fought the establishment and became the first African-American governor in the United States. As a nation, we seem to have forgotten the differences between comments intended to lead and comments intended to incite, between strategies that are intended to produce results and strategies intended to isolate our opponents. Richmond is not Washington. We are separated by more than the Potomac River. Now, Virginia politics are not ideal, but we are relatively more positive and respectful than DC's version. We have a long history in Virginia that stresses honesty and service, and we trace our roots to our founding representatives. I dare say that once an election is over, and when a legislator or an elected official walks into our state capitol building, he or she enters a building designed by Jefferson and filled with tradition. In Virginia, that still means something. We do have that special trust. We will always have civility, respect, and trust as a hallmark of our politics if we remember that trust is foremost, and we honor trust. Thank you so much.